Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to get started in just a few moments. If you wanna drop in the chat where you're tuning in from and where you are studying abroad, that would be awesome. So to everyone who's joining, we're going to get started momentarily, but if you wanna drop in the chat where you're tuning in from and where you're studying abroad, that would be awesome. And you should be able to chat with everyone now. <laughs> so once again, if you want to drop in the chat where you're studying abroad and where you're tuning in from, that would be awesome. Okay, tuning in from France, Argentina to Spain. Awesome. Oh, we have a lot coming in. Nebraska to Spain, Atlanta to Seoul, France to MSU, from Austria to UNCO, a lot of Switzerland to the US. Awesome. Buenos Aires to California. All right, well, thank you so much. We are super excited to have everyone here today. Welcome to our ISEP current student panel. As you can see, we are joined here by our lovely panelists who are current ISEP students studying abroad all, all around the world. And in a few moments, we are going to ask them questions about their experience abroad, as well as have questions from you all that we answer in the chat. So if you do have any questions today for our panelists, we encourage you to drop them in the Q&A box and we will do our best to get them to our panelists. But as I mentioned first, we have a few reminders. As many of you have already seen, you have your ISEP acceptance package, which if you haven't already received, you will shortly in your acceptance package tab in your ISEP dashboard. For ISEP exchange students, you have three main sections to complete. You have your student contract, your medical form, and your ISEP acceptance payment. You have three weeks from the time you receive your acceptance package to complete it. As you can see here, there's also coordinator signature, and this is the signature by your home ISEP coordinator. If you have any questions on when this will be completed, we encourage you to consult and review your ISEP acceptance package with your home ISEP coordinator. For ISEP direct students, same thing, you have three weeks from the time you receive your ISEP acceptance package to complete it. Your ISEP acceptance package has four main sections, your student contract, your medical form, your program deposit, and you must enroll in your ISEP insurance in order to be fully accepted. So completing your ISEP acceptance package. For the student contract, there are three main parts. There is the program information, and this contains important information on your program start and end dates, your housing benefits, your meal benefits, if applicable, mostly for ISEP exchange students that are included in your program. We strongly ask that you read all information thoroughly and follow all directions that you receive from your host university in order to secure your housing and for them to prepare for your arrival. In the second tab, you will see your contract of participation. This includes important information from your host university and from ISEP. We also ask that you review this information and the conditions of placement and let us know, your student services officers, if you have any questions on these terms. And then you will see on the third tab, your signature is needed. You will electronically sign your contract to confirm that you have read and accepted all terms that are outlined in your acceptance package. The next section of your acceptance package is your medical form. This is a space for you to note any medical history as well as any medical needs that require accommodation for you while on program. 
If you have any questions on the medical accommodations that you will need on program, we also encourage you to reach out to your student services officer. For the acceptance payment, as we mentioned, for ICEP exchange students, if applicable, your acceptance will only be processed once you complete your acceptance payment in the invoices tab on your ICEP dashboard. And then for ICEP direct students, for your program deposit, your acceptance will only be processed once you complete the payment of your program deposit that is in your invoices tab on your ICEP dashboard, as well as enroll in your ICEP health and safety program, which is your insurance. Um, for direct students, as I mentioned, you must enroll in your ICEP health and safety program before you are considered accepted. For exchange students, you will enroll and pay for your ICEP health and safety program after you are accepted. Please keep in mind that you must complete your enrollment and payment for ICEP exchange students minimum 45 days before the start of your program. Awesome. So now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Jackie. Hi, everybody. My name is Jackie Langdon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm the marketing manager at ICEP Study Abroad. Uh, I studied abroad myself back in my junior year in college. I lived in Costa Rica for seven months. All my classes were entirely in Spanish, and I lived with a host family, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much that I got very excited when I came back and had the realization that you can have a career and study abroad. So I'm really excited to chat with our current students who are abroad and help answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, so we can go ahead and get to introducing today's panelists. Uh, why don't we start with Aiden unmuting yourself and um, introduce yourself and we'll go down the column on the left hand side there. Tell us uh, where you are coming from your and where your study abroad location is. Hello, my name is Aiden. Um, I'm from Virginia, uh, about an hour from Washington, D.C. at Bridgewater College. Um, and I'm currently studying abroad in Montevideo, Uruguay at uh, Universidad Católica del Uruguay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then we will go ahead and, uh, uh, Joanna, do you want to unmute yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Johanna. I am from Austria studying at the Karl Franzen University in Graz. And I'm currently at Rocky Mountain College in Billings, Montana. Awesome. Okay, Maddie, you're next, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. I'm from Butler University in Indianapolis, and I'm currently studying um, in Buenos Aires at Universidad del Salvador. Awesome, thank you. Okay, now let's go down the right-hand side. Hey, my name's Virgil. Um, I'm originally from London. I go to the University of Sussex and I'm studying at App State in North Carolina. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Sierra. I am from the US, uh, Kent State University, and I'm currently studying abroad in Chile um, in Pontifica Universidad Católica de Valparaíso. Hi everyone, so I'm Anna. Um, I'm from Virginia Tech in Virginia, US, and I'm currently studying in the United Kingdom at the University of Essex. Awesome, thank you guys for introducing yourselves and for joining us today to um, help share your experiences. We'll go ahead and have everybody answer this first question. Uh, we can go in the same order that we just did, but what was your arrival experience like? Tell us what it was like to arrive in your new host country. So we'll go ahead and start with Aiden, yes, thank you. I was very excited. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it was very exciting. Um, I had been texting and communicating with my host family for a while. Um, it was cool to finally get through customs and see them all excited to see me and um, give them all hugs. Um, it was definitely a little stressful at first because I'm a B1 Spanish speaker. I'm not still have a lot of work left to do. Um, so communicating was a little tricky at first, but my host sister speaks really good English. Um, so she was able to help 
fill in any gaps that I might have had. But yeah, it was very exciting um, and nice to be able to explore the new city and get the hang of things. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, well, my I had a bit of a, a rocky start actually. Um, when I arrived, I, I couldn't move into my dorm. I'm staying at the university dorm here um, before the day that I actually had to be here. So I still decided to come to Billings a couple of days early to, you know, sleep off the jet lag and get, get a little adjusted to the place. But I had to stay somewhere else and then go to the university and I could only move into my dorm room the day that college actually started. So that was that was a little tricky. Um, but from that from that day on, it was just beautiful. I had great roommates, um, met people from the start, and it was really easy once I got over that first. But I would advise everyone to, if you're traveling through different time zones, allow for a little extra time to get adjusted before you actually start college. Uh. When I first arrived in Argentina, um, I was actually really fortunate because the gal that I sat next to on the plane is from Argentina and she was coming back from being an au pair in the US for like 10 months. And so she helped me through the airport and like got me to baggage claim and everything, which was very nice. And then UCEL actually provided transportation from the airport to our homestays. Um, so we met up with all the other girls because it happened to be all girls who are taking that transportation. And like while we were writing to our home stays, we made a little group chat. So like since my stay here, like anytime I have a question, I text the girls and I'm like, hey, like, do you know the answer to this? Like, do you know where to get this? Which is very nice. And one of the girls in that transport was at, is actually my housemate in my home stay. So whenever um, one of us doesn't know the word or can't quite get across what we're trying to say. We have somebody to fill in the gaps, which is really nice. Um, I was quite lucky. I have family in America, which kind of helped because I got to have all my college stuff before I actually moved in. So they um, helped me drive down and helped me move in. But there was a really good international like group and team here at App State that helped everyone like settle in they set up social security number appointments which I know is very important especially if you want to get a job here in America um they took us to Walmart if we needed to get any like college essentials um so that really helped and I also got to meet my host family in the first week too and they're literally so lovely like I spent most holidays with them um so yeah Okay, um, so as far as my experience, it definitely started off a little rough getting here. Um, it was a couple days before that my flight, they had sold too many tickets or so, and my flight was canceled. So I was supposed to get here on a certain day, and I ended up not being able to fly in until a couple days after, um, which was a little bit harder having to just figure that out last minute. Um, I was feeling in the home stretch, and then all of a sudden I had to sort out these big major details. Um, and in addition, I missed a couple days of like the orientation and some of the important as far as like getting in contact with other students and stuff like that. So it started off a little challenging to say the least, but it worked out beautifully um, just coming here and then being able to meet um, locals. And in addition to that, being able to um, just become really close to the friends that I met here who are also studying abroad from different countries. Um, and it just worked out really great as far as my family as well here. They are amazing people and I have a big family. So I have like four sisters here and it's just great. Um, the, the age gap is perfect. So we just have bonded really great and it's been smooth sailing since I stepped foot here. <laughs> So um, getting here, I had to get like a cab from the airport because my school didn't offer transportation. So I ended up finding somebody in our, um, so there was an Essex abroad group chat. And so I ended up finding somebody who I could ride with and we got to campus together. 
And we were just kind of like lugging like our entire luggage with us, like going around campus trying to find like the office. Um, but once we did, I got my key and I got to go to my like dorm because I live on campus and um, getting into my dorm. It was really confusing at first. I saw a bunch of people in the kitchen and then I found out that they were my flatmates and I got a chance to talk to them. I live with like 13 people, which seems like insane because normally the most I live with is like four. But um, I got along really well with my flatmates and they've kind of just been like my travel buddies kind of just like exploring and they've kind of gotten me through the first week through this entire experience. Awesome. Thanks to each of you for sharing what it was like arriving on site. It can definitely be different for everybody. So it's so good to hear such a vast range of perspectives. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into our next question, which is, what are your classes like? Have you had any favorite field trips or excursions? And how do they compare to courses at your home university? Um, so why don't we go ahead and start with Sergal? Um, my experience is really different, especially to back home um, at Sussex, because I don't know if everyone else, but we usually have our lectures in like really big lecture theatres, especially with law. Um, but it, here in America, it's mainly in smaller classrooms. So you really get to build a relationship with your teachers. And one of my like aims when I came to America was to go to an American jail. Um, so one of my teachers helped me get into an American jail and um, do a ride along with one of the police officers. So that was quite an experience. Um, but yeah, they really like are very welcoming and everyone's been so lovely. The classes are really interesting and yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, so that's somebody uh, coming from the UK to the US. So why don't we do the opposite and ask uh, Anna. Um, so my classes have been like, I feel like very, a little bit like different than like what I have at home because at home, um, it's normally like I have major classes and then just like subject classes for like my electives and here, like coming into like Essex, it's very like more specific, like everyone in my, like for my classes for theater, everyone is basically like a film or like a theater. So they're more like specified in terms of like what they're studying as where like, I've kind of been used to like having electives and being in various like different fields. And so, um, it's been really interesting to get to like have like these discussions with people who are like more specified or more like more studied in that area. <laughs> um, but um, a few of my favorite classes have been so far like my film classes as I've gotten to explore more of like um, analyzing films rather than what I would normally do at home, which is more of like theater. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Okay, let's uh, go to South America. How about Maddie? Um, I think classes in Argentina are kind of totally different than they are in the US. Um, at my Butler isn't like super big, it has about 5,000 students. So um, like Sergal was talking about earlier, like the classes are smaller and you get a closer relationship with your professor. And here in Argentina, the classes are much larger, the classrooms are much larger. Um, and I kind of have two different varieties of classes. I have some classes that are for international students and then some classes are just like regular classes. So they're like completely in Spanish and they have, they're filled with Argentinian students. Um, but in my classes that are regular classes, um, the professors have been very nice, very accommodating. And I'll, like on the first day I introduced myself, I was like, hey, I'm Maddie, I'm an exchange student. And they were like, okay, let me know if I talk too fast. Let me know if I need to stop and explain something or if you don't understand. And so that was very nice and it like put me at ease. Um, but the professors have been very nice here. I think the, the biggest adjustment for me has been that the classes are two to three hours long, like minimum, and they're only once a week. And whereas in the US, I have classes that are 50 minutes or an hour, um, but multiple times a week. So that's definitely been an adjustment, but it hasn't been like bad. It's just been kind of neutral, but I've enjoyed my classes overall. Yeah, 
Thank you for sharing all of that, Maddie. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into our next question, which is, how have you met friends while abroad? What has been your experience like meeting locals? Um, and we'll go ahead and start with Joanna. Um, well, for me, I'm at a very small college and I am currently the only exchange student here, at least the only one that's just here for this semester. So um, I think that my experience may be different from many other exchange experiences. I hear from other people that they, you know, hang out more with other internationals. And I really had to um, find some local friends, which was actually great for me. Um, and I did that through, well, I'm lucky because I'm an environmental science major and our degree is very hands-on. I think this is the first time in two weeks that I'm not covered in mud because um, we spend so much time outside doing field labs and I love it. And it's a great bonding experience with the other environmental science majors. Um, but apart from that, I really took advantage of all the theme nights, game nights. Um, we have an outdoor recreation program that organizes trips. And I really went to all of these things where you meet people that you may not study with or may not be in the same program with. And I kind of set myself the goal to make friends because it might be challenging for some people at first. Um, but I really, I just talked to people. I walked up to them, introduced myself and from, that on it was I think that in the US everyone is generally very um, friendly and, and it's easy small talk and people are usually interested I think everywhere in the world if you say that you're an exchange student so take advantage of that I guess <laughs> okay so uh, the advice here is get covered in mud and you'll make friends <laughs> Um, thank you for sharing that. So let's jump on over to Sierra. Okay, so I've been really lucky in the position that the host family that I live with, they're very social and they just, they're always having like dinner parties and always having friends over and stuff like that. And um, I just, I, rec I would recommend spending time with them, especially when you're trying to learn a language. It just helps to spend time immersed in that. And like my family, they only really speak Spanish. So I've just been really challenged in trying to produce effective communication and all everything there. So as far as like meeting locals and friends here, um, internationally, my classes are all in Spanish and they're with, um, inter they're with like Chileans as well. So in that case, it's easy to just have some small talk here and there and in the household when, we have people over. I just ask people and like, hey, want to hang out? And like from there on, it's great because, you know, you get to see a different view from the city and different opinions um, from natives, from people who live here. And as far as like international students, I found that it's it's easier to make friends than, you know, you may expect just because everyone's kind of in a similar situation and um, everyone's just you know, we're all just looking for people to hang out with and interesting things to do and to get the most of the country while we're here. So it's been great. And I definitely recommend it. I definitely recommend branching out and talking to as many people as you can and just getting the most out of your experience down here or wherever you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's hop on over to Aiden. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a similar experience. Um, my host family is really great. Um, they invite me to go and uh, do stuff with them a lot. Um, and they've invited family over and other people that I've gotten to meet and hang out with, um, as well as hanging out with people in the international program. Three of my classes are designed for international students, which has been very helpful because we're all kind of in the same boat of figuring Spanish out and trying to communicate. Um, so I've met a lot of them too. Um, there's some, actually many people from France um, that I've gotten to know and talk to. Um, and it's been very interesting as far as interacting with locals and my other classes. I have two psychology classes with regular students in the university. And I'm the only international student in those classes. And, um, you know, the first week throughout class, they'd be like, why'd you, why did you choose Uruguay? Like, 
what, what our country is so small or oh where in the united states are you from um just a bunch of fun questions that they wanted to know so it was fun talking to them and trying to figure out how to respond <laughs> great thank you um how are we doing with the chat do we have any questions we want to read there do we want to oh i'm sorry i see that uh Sergal, you raised your hand please go ahead and answer the question um, I was going to say, well, I've got two pieces of advice. I was going to say showcase your accent. Like, wherever you're going, they've probably never <laughs> heard or spoken. Like, I know I'm the first British person a lot of Americans have spoken to. And, like, it gets you far having a British accent here. Um, and then the second advice would be participate, like, in whatever you can participate in. So my university had, um, like, they offered us host families. So not every international um student has a host family but I like asked for a host family and they're literally the sweetest group um they take me to church every single week and you get to um specify what type of host family you'd prefer um social university does offer something like that I definitely recommend participating in it thank you um how are we doing with the chat do we have any questions we want to read or um we do have a question and I guess this could be to anyone um I guess like what kind of tips would you have for financing your semester abroad or what did you do to prepare um, in terms of budgeting or how you currently budget right now I saw Aiden raise his hand immediately yeah go ahead um, so I don't know if this is the case for a bunch of programs, but it definitely helped that my semester here was different from my semester at home. So I had a longer break and was able to just, I just worked a lot full time um, and tried to save up as much money as I could. Um, but it also helps a lot that you realize a lot of the expenses, at least for me, expenses that you might have in your home country you don't have when you go abroad. Um, I'm from a very rural area, so there's lots of driving, gas in the car. So coming to a city with lots of public transportation and stuff, all of those gas expenses were just gone, and it was, it's was it been a lot easier to spend money. Um, so I definitely recommend looking into like what expenses you might have as far as transportation, other lifestyle expenses, and just kind of compare that to – what you're used to spending at home and you, you might find that it's a little less. Okay, Sierra. Um, okay, so I definitely agree with um, with what was said because there was there was a gap before I came here as far as just like the semesters and the schooling worked. And I took that time to work a whole lot because I knew that coming here, I didn't want like, finances to really impede on my time here and I for one really recommend like traveling within your country or around your country like I, I've been studying abroad in Chile right now and I've just studied up and down or traveled up and down wherever I can go and as far as Buenos Aires también oh, sorry my Spanish comes out at the end of times I guess but as far as going to Buenos Aires and Peru as well um getting that experience in and I didn't want anything to limit that so as far as maybe looking ahead like if there were places you wanted to see specifically within your country um and you know like if you knew you wanted to go to somewhere in particular and planning how much that might cost within it um just to prepare ahead but I definitely recommend trying to just work and see what you can prior so that way you can be fully prepared to get the most out of your experience Yes, that's a great recommendation. And I will say that I feel like one regret that a lot of students who come back have is that they didn't explore their host country enough. So that's a great, great tip. And um, just a personal recommendation is if you're ever planning any travel, like try to figure out what's considered um, a holiday in a certain location, because that could always impact like pricing as well, depending on where you're going or availability or if things are even closed. But I see that uh, Sergal has her hand up as well. So go ahead. Um, I was going to say, going off what Sierra said, definitely like research where you want to go in the country. Like I know, I did not know America was going to be way more expensive than London. I didn't think anything was going to be more expensive than London, but America is definitely up there. Um, but definitely save. Like I've been able to go to Miami or New Jersey, New York. Like if you want to explore the country properly, then 
think about your expenses beforehand. Yes, thank you for that. Um, yeah, everybody has such good tips here. Uh, if we don't have any more questions in the chat right now, we can go ahead and jump into our next question, uh, which is what activities are you involved in outside of your classes? So let's go ahead and ask uh, Joanna. Okay. Um, well, outside of classes, I really do so much that is part of my classes that it sometimes doesn't leave much time for anything else, especially because here at Rocky, we have a very condensed semester. We only had a long weekend for spring break, only had two days off for Easter. So it's really just very crammed together. Um, but I did sign up for choir and that was one of the best ideas that I had because I met many people and it's just a, a nice little extra something that's not studying but still with other people and to have things on a regular basis. Um, I spend a lot of time outside, as I said, not just for class, but also for extra field trips that I sign up for. Um, there are trips happening almost every weekend that my school organizes, so I've been taking advantage of that. And it's always nice to meet other people there too. Um, and personally, I'm currently preparing for a summer job here at the same college. So <laughs> I've been doing a lot of extra work in preparation for that. Um, yeah, but definitely that the choir was a, a deal break. Like that was, that changed my experience here a lot because I signed up after two weeks I think. And I've met so many lovely people. It's just nice to do something uh, where you have a shared interest and that's not classwork, but still happens, you know, weekly or just something that you kind of have to show up for. So you, you keep motivated, but it's not classwork. So I've been enjoying that a lot. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's go on over to Maddie. Uh, so I haven't um, joined like clubs associated with my university all that much. And I think that's mostly because my university is a pretty urban university um, and it's a private school. So a lot of students there are focused on school, um, but I definitely have a routine uh, with some of my fellow um, international students, like every Monday after our uh, beginning Spanish class, we either go and get some coffee at a local cafe or get some ice cream. There are a lot of ice cream shops in Buenos Aires and a lot of cafes. And usually on Wednesday nights, they have half price tickets. So we go and we watch a movie all together, um, which is really helpful or like a really good practice opportunity because they'll always have this, they'll pretty much always have the subtitles on in Spanish. So you get to practice your Spanish in an unusual way. Um, but definitely for me, like having a routine, um, planning things, planning trips with other, like my friends here, have been really helpful in making uh, making life fun and engaging and uh, making it feel a little less overwhelming. Great, thank you. How about you, Aiden? Oh uh, yeah, so there's an organization here um, called Mies, and they coordinate events for um, like any abroad student or a lot. So it's not just at my university; all of the universities um, they plan and they do something called Mies Miracles. Um, so every Wednesday they have like a they'll go to like a club or a bar or something, um, and it's a chance to like hang out with a bunch of other international students. So that's pretty cool. Um, but outside of that, really just trying to assimilate and get the hang of things. Um, like she said, having a routine has been really helpful. Um, every day doing the same sort of thing and trying to kind of get a pattern going, but yeah. Great. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to share about what activities you're involved in outside of class? That's okay, we can hop on over to our next question. We got a lot of great ones to ask. Um, what is a cultural difference in your host country that you didn't expect that you had to adjust to? 
Um, let's go ahead and start with Anna. Um, I feel like between like the US and the UK, there aren't that many like drastic differences as like this, it's still English, um, but there are like various like differences, like certain holidays that like, I'm just like, oh, they also celebrate it. Um, no, it's just particularly to the US or like there's just certain holidays that are like particular just to the UK, specifically like Easter. It's like very like heavily celebrated here. Um, instead of spring break, it's considered Easter break, which is really unique. Um, and in terms of, I guess, like terminology, there's certain like phrases and like terminology that like British people use more than like Americans. I know like one thing that kind of caught me off guard when I first came here was um, a few people would ask me like, you all right? And I would just be like, oh, like, did I do something? Like, is there something like, do I look like I'm sick or something? <laughs> and um, it's just kind of their way of greeting you. And I didn't know that at the beginning, but it was really interesting to find that out. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Just like, why does everybody keep asking me that? Um, <laughs> I love that. Okay, let's go ahead to Sierra. Um, so yeah, there definitely has been a couple cultural differences. Um, as far as like food in the US, it's, you know, typically a breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, and here, there's just like a different time of like eating, like you have onse, which is kind of like later at night. Um, and it's like tea and coffee and like bread and stuff like that. Um, I've also found myself um, eating a, or drinking a lot of coffee and eating a lot of bread. That's very popular here. Um, and one thing about Chile is like I've, I've come to learn that there's a lot of different, they're called like modismos or chilenismos, which is just different phrases that they've kind of cultivated here that like you're not learning in any Spanish textbook, like different things that they don't even think twice about saying, but I'm just like questioning whether or not I know Spanish because I, I don't know these things. And then it's definitely helped me to learn a lot, um, particular to the culture and to the environment here. But I think that's pretty much it. There's been a lot of different like views on the environment here and they're just a lot more resourceful um, with reusing things and being smart about like getting the most out of what you purchase and stuff as opposed to the US, which I think is a little more wasteful um and greetings as well it's in the u.s greetings are like a hey and you know it's it's just a little bit more different here and more like um personal affection and stuff like that as well but i think that's about it <laughs> okay let's uh jump on over to circle um for me the main thing i think is if you don't have a car in america you're gonna suffer so badly. And I'm 21 and I don't even have my license because you don't need a car in London. But here, like, you need a car to survive. I'm so lucky I've got like really good friends that take us wherever we wanna go. So it hasn't been a crazy problem, but yeah, there was that. And then the food. <laughs> I don't know what it is about American food, but I just, I think that's the one thing I do miss about London. Definitely the food um, is way better, but at least I've experimented a variety of fast food restaurants here. Okay, I, Joanna, I was curious what you had to say as well. Yes, I definitely agree with the food. <laughs> I miss coffee from home too. <laughs> um, everything is sweet here for, um, for, for what I'm used to. <laughs> and I'm getting used to all the sugar now, so I hate that. <laughs> no, um, one thing that was very interesting for me and that I would like to share is I think that in general, Americans are, and this is obviously stereotypically speaking and not true for everyone, but tend to be a little more direct, a little more upfront, which can be good, which can be bad. It's just something that I didn't really expect and I had to adjust to. Like um, when people offered me to take me to places or, you know, invite me to trips, I would usually say no first because I wanted to be polite. You know, no, I didn't say, no, I don't want to, but I would say, I wouldn't go ahead and say, oh, hell yes, I want to go. Um, because in Central Europe, it's more polite to actually say no first and then the people offer you again and again, and you're not supposed to say, oh yes, I'd really like that. You're supposed to say, 
you know, I don't want to cause any extra trouble. And so that got me in trouble here because people would not offer a second time because they thought they were annoying me. <laughs> so that's something that was very interesting for me. I don't know if that's anyone else's experience, but um, just speaking about stuff like that with my friends here was pretty helpful. And also greetings um, in Austria. We don't really ask, how are you? Um, at least, not if it's not close friends or family so it's been very different and interesting oh and i miss walking places so i, I totally agree with the car <laughs> car issue too i don't have a car i have people who take me places too and i'm lucky that we have most of the things we need on campus but it's definitely an issue yes yeah. Thank you. Does anyone else have uh, something that they want to add? I feel like we have some great answers to this question. I definitely kind of like I'm in Argentina and coming from the US. And I think definitely the like cars versus public transportation thing is definitely way different because here in Buenos Aires, they have a really robust subway system and a really robust uh, busing system. And you can use like the same card to pay for both of them. And it's and like you, if there's a subway or bus, you can usually walk. And if it's too far to walk, Ubers and taxis are pretty cheap, especially compared to the US. Um, and that's something I really, really love about Buenos Aires. Lo I love being able to walk everywhere, take the subway. Um, and that's something I'll, I think I'll miss when I go back to the US, because in the US, it's a bit more of a hassle if you want to go somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, thank you to each of you for uh, answering that question. Um, we'll go ahead to our next one, which is why don't you tell us about one of your favorite experiences so far? Um, if we have time, we can have everybody answer this question, but we'll go ahead and start with Aiden. Yeah, so uh, last week was Semana de Turismo in Uruguay. Um, which is like the same as Semana Santa. It's basically a week off where people can go travel and hang out with family. Um, and I ended up going to uh, Periapolis, which is about two hours from Montevideo. Um, my host family has some property there. And actually some of their family from Buenos Aires um, came over and was hanging out with us. Um, so it was fun to meet them. And they brought a bunch of bags of candy from Argentina and they were like try this one try this. oh you have to try this one and uh that's how I learned how to say diabetes in Spanish um I was like I don't want to get diabetes yeah calm down on the candy but uh, uh while we were there I also got to see some there's sea lions in the wild just chilling on the sidewalks um so you can just be walking around there'll be a sea lion um, taking a nap, which was kind of different, but really fun. Um, and we also got to go to a wildlife reserve and I got to see some capybaras uh, and that was awesome. Um, definitely on my bucket list to see some capybaras. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay, how about Sergal? Um, I think one of mine would have to be celebrating Thanksgiving because that's not a British holiday. Um, but I just I spent it with my family in New Jersey and it's like a peaceful Christmas that like you don't need to think about presents. You don't need to think about anything else that will cause you stress. You just eat and have a good time. So that was definitely one of my favorite moments. Thank you. OK, how about Joanna? Um. I'd say one of my absolute favorites was a weekend field trip that we took to Yellowstone National Park. And we cross country skied and snowshoed through the park. And it was educational, but also very fun. And we got to sleep in, it's, it's called a Quincy. So you basically make a pile of snow and then you carve out the cape in the snow and you sleep in there. So that was very interesting. And it was just so special to spend time in the national park during a season that you would normally not be outside for that much, especially not the camp and with basically no tourists. So it really felt like pristine nature. And that was very, very special for me. 
Great. Okay. How about Sierra? Um, so definitely some of my favorite experiences have just been like traveling within Chile and within the country. Um, we just had La Semana Santa and um, I took advantage of that time with some friends to go to Patagonia, which was an amazing experience. It just had like a beautiful balance of like beautiful mountains and us, we got to see like the marble caves, um, swimming in like lagoons. It was just like, it, it was amazing. Um, and it's just been great, like being able to get out in nature. And in addition to that, just meeting some like amazing people. Um, there's not, at least where I come from in the States, it's not as much of a thing, but down here there's hostels. So you can like stay with people um, who are from completely different areas of the world. And it's just amazing getting to talk and just to hear everyone's like experiences and where they've been to in the world and like what people have to share. and it's accumulated a very long, a very long bucket list of mine of places I'm, I'm planning on going. So it just keeps getting longer and there's just a lot of beautiful things to see in the world. So I definitely loved that experience of mine. Thanks, Sierra. How about Maddie? Uh, my favorite experience was definitely this past weekend for Semana Santa. Uh, me and a whole bunch of other international students went to, went and visited Uruguay. Uruguay's like super close to Buenos Aires, like to get to Colonia, it's only like an hour and 15 minute ferry. And so we took a ferry over to Colonia and spent the day like exploring like the old city, which like where like the colonial era was, and like there's this big fort and it's very beautiful. And then after, at the end of the day, we took a bus to Montevideo and we spent the day exploring there's like a free tour that you can do we went to um we visited the plaza independencia which is an Aiden's photo actually um and we visited el mercado de puerto and like a whole bunch of different stuff in the city and then the third day we went we took a two-hour bus up to punta del este which has some really beautiful beaches like it was literally the cleanest beach i've ever been on and like I bought a cold blanket and I bought some pretty earrings and like it was all we went to three different places over the weekend and we only did it by like the ferry and the bus um, and it was just a really great time a really good experience and we got to see it was jam-packed but we got to see a lot of the country um, it was really a gorgeous trip and a lot of fun Thank you. And let's hop on over to Anna real quick, and then we'll get to our questions in the chat. I see we have a few. Okay. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Oh, just uh, one of your favorite experiences oh, uh, okay. so far. Um, so definitely, like, towards the beginning of um, the semester, during, like, Lunar New Year, um, that was my first trip out to London with a bunch of my flatmates and a bunch of my friends. And it was really interesting to see how different Lunar New Year is celebrated in London versus, like, how I celebrate it at home. Um, and just seeing how big the celebrations were and, of course, seeing, like, how public transportation kind of works in London because at um, home, I normally just, like, other people mentioned but before in the U.S. there's a lot of like driving and so there's a lot of just me driving places but um, I had to figure out how to work the tube system which I found out was very similar to how like the metro system works in like Virginia, Washington D.C. area and so then I kind of like used my knowledge and applied it to the tube system but it still was really confusing because there's just so many different lines so many different things happening and so I got to learn how to do use that. I also got to learn how to use the train systems and that was something that was really interesting and overall it just gave me a good experience with my friends because it was kind of our first time bonding over the fact that we were trying to get to a place that we all just didn't know where like how to get there because we would just be like oh it's this line no it's this and kind of just fight but also <laughs> get it together and just get to the places and see these new things that we've never seen before yeah. Thank you. Okay, Cynthia, I'll pass it on over to yeah. you for some chat questions. So we do have two questions specifically about uh, languages. So do you guys have any advice for going to a country where you don't have 
language knowledge in you know whatever language they primarily speak and then kind of related to that um, have you taken courses in a language that's different than your native language and what tips or advice would you have um, for navigating um, academics or just life in general So, I mean, I don't, I knew English before I came to the US, but I still think that I can answer the second part of the question. Um, because obviously all my classes are taught in English here and it's still my second language. And I had like 10 years of English and coming here, um, similar to what was said about Spanish, there are just sayings or references that I didn't understand at first. Um, I definitely found that it took me a little longer to do class assignments, writing, reading. Um, and I think it's important to not be nervous about that, ask for help, um, plan a little extra time. And if you don't know the language, I traveled other countries where I don't speak the language for longer time periods before. And I always try to know a few useful things, like reading, saying thank you, just something that will break the ice and get you in touch with the people. And from then on, it's usually a lot easier. Okay, I think I saw Sierra's hand raised. Um, so yeah, in a similar situation, I. I knew Spanish before coming to Chile, but it has just been definitely different um, as far as like studying a language for however many years um, in comparison to being in the country and like experiencing it firsthand. So as far as like, um, oh my gosh, what was the second part? Uh, the second question was. Yeah, um, like how is it um, learning in a different language that's not your native language and how have you mm -hmm. adjusted to that in school or outside of school? Yeah, sorry, I forgot that part. But as far as like learning it, I think just like being upfront and like honest with others and just like really putting yourself out there and not being afraid to like ask for help or to ask people to speak slower and stuff like that. I've noticed that a lot of people are just very accommodating and helpful. And in my situation, um, outside of my host family, a lot of people or students, they're also learning English. So if you're in a situation where people are learning your language, and as long as you show that your desire, like you want to learn their language and you want to learn their culture and stuff like that, people are pretty generous and kind with helping you get there and filling in gaps if there's words you don't understand. And um, if Google Translate and stuff like that exists as well. But I think as long as you have like the right heart about wanting to learn more um, and just being upfront with people, then it usually helps cover that language barrier as well. One more quick comment um, for everyone whose first language is English. Um, you will probably experience that people are excited about practicing their English with you. I don't know how your experience is, but... Um, that's definitely something that I saw back home in Austria. Whenever we had exchange students, everyone was so excited to speak English with them that they sometimes didn't get to practice their German. So um, if you want to learn a language, remind people that you want to speak their language and not practice English with them. No one will be upset. You just have to remind them. That is definitely true. Like I like have walked up to like a, Yosko clerk and been like hola and they're like do you speak English like immediately after one word and I'm just like yeah but I'm sad that you figured it out so fast so definitely like like she said definitely remind them that you want to practice your Spanish or keep responding in Spanish even if they ask you questions in English Okay, thank you, you guys. Um, I will throw one more question since we're, you know, nearing the end of our panel time. Um, we can go around real quick and just answer what are you most looking forward to in the remainder of your time abroad? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Aiden. 
Uh, I'm really just looking forward to being able to continue to watch my Spanish improve. Um, when I first, when my host family first picked me up, I could pretty much say hola and, you know, como estas. I could read and write pretty well, but speaking was hard. Um, and I've been here for a little over a month now. And like this morning, um, I was having breakfast with my host mom and we were able to, I actually was able to like, we were talking and having a conversation in Spanish. So, so far it's already been very rewarding to see my progress. Um, and throughout the next, you know, three or four months, I'm excited to see how that continues and what place I'm in when I leave with my Spanish abilities. I'm excited about that. Great. How about Joanna? Um, I'm really excited to travel a little um, because I have not really been anywhere out of Montana so far. And just because we had short breaks. And I'm really excited that before I start my summer internship, I'll have three weeks off and travel a little further. And then I'm also super excited about the research internship and just to stay here and experience something else than the cold because it's been very cold here <laughs> and see Montana in, in the summer, I guess. So just stay a little longer, experience more. I'm really happy about that. Okay, Maddie. Uh, similar to what Aiden said, watching my Spanish grow and seeing where I'll be at the end of the month. I have some Spanish speaking friends at home. And before I left, I was like, when I get back, we can have conversations in Spanish. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm also really looking forward to traveling, exploring more of Buenos Aires and Argentina. Um, I know I definitely want to go to Mendoza and Argentina with some of my exchange friends hopefully in May, um, but I'm looking forward to exploring and to improving and just overall growing as a person. Okay, Sergal. Um, I'm excited to travel um, around the States a bit more, but I'm also sad to be leaving here because you generally do build a family. Like I would say, don't be scared about doing a study abroad like everyone becomes a family and I'm so sad to be leaving them but yeah I'm excited to travel and see more of America. Thank you. Sierra? Um, I think it was kind of along the lines of what was said but I just think looking back to like when I first arrived and I was like a little nervous and I didn't know what to expect and just like now seeing how much I've grown like as a person and just being more like culturally immersed as well. And not only that, but just my Spanish has really improved. So I'm just very excited to see where I'll be at at the end in terms of my language and how, able, how I'm like able to effectively communicate in that sense. Um, but as well, being able to like travel and just learn more about Chile. Like I really wanted to get myself immersed into that and knowing about their past and their culture and their future and just everything that I can. So being able to come back with this information and like just being so excited to share everything and share my experiences with my family home and then maybe inspire others to travel. And because I really do think studying abroad is an amazing opportunity and one that I'm very happy that everyone's going to be able to experience. And I think that's like the best thing you can do. And so um, I'm very excited to continue traveling within Chile and within other like surrounding countries. I have a trip planned for Peru and then I also have a Mendoza trip coming up. So I'm just trip after trip trying to just get the most of everything and it's been amazing. So I definitely recommend. Great. And then on Anna. Um definitely what has like been said like by other people as like I definitely want to travel more, especially with the people in my flat and just like the friends that I've made because like I might never really get to see like the same people like again like all together as I do right now and just like being able to like learn and like build these memories with them and it's just been a very like enriching experience as like I've gotten an opportunity to talk to people from like all over the world who are now all together and we're all in this like strange country and we're trying to explore it so definitely to go to other parts of like the UK and also just like all over Europe, wherever we can make it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time to chat with our students today. Um, we're going to go ahead and close up the presentation with a few closing remarks.
Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so thank you to everyone for joining us today and thank you to our panelists. As a reminder, these spaces you see on the screen are your student services officers at ISEP. They're here to assist you with any questions you may have. Our contact information is on your ISEP dashboard. So if you have any questions on your acceptance package or on your program, we encourage you to reach out to your student services officers. And then we also encourage you to connect with us. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at ISEP Study Abroad. And we also encourage you to tag us in your content for an opportunity to be shared on our platforms. So thank you so much once again to everyone for joining us. Thank you to our panelists. It has been um, great to hear about everyone's experience so far on program. We hope all of our panelists have an amazing end to their semester. And we are super excited for all of you who joined us today that are going on program to have an amazing time as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you, Sergal. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, let's see, Joanna. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Sierra. Um, it's been such a pleasure to have you all. And like I said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your semester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.